Good day, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to walk you through how I create one of my composites. You'll see that I'm on Affinity Photo 2, and I've also got all of my assets ready to go down here on the right hand side. So, as usual, let's get started. We're going to go through each of these layers one by one, um, getting the composite laid out. So, first thing I'm going to do is add the picture of the grass here. And as usual, all the links for all the pictures I use will be in the description below. And and some of them I'll provide um, on the Buy Me A Coffee site for you to go and download absolutely free. So this is our grass. Let's go and put our tree trunks in each side and our branches. So you can see we're building up the composite with our tree on this side. We've got exactly the same on this side again and some branches. We've got some rocks to put in front here. And we've also, we'll skip this one for the second. We'll go down here to our stone wall and add our stone wall. Now we can add our crow on top here. Now we can add our city in the background here. Let's add our sky for the city. We can now add our stars. So we'll turn our stars on. And with our stars, we're going to change the blend mode to screen and drop that opacity down to about 50%. And now we can add our moon here and turn that on. Again, we're going to change that blend mode to screen. So there we go. We've got starting to get our basic composite all in place. You can see that we have some issues with the grass down here. We've still got some white bits left over. So let's go up to this grass layer. Come over here to select. Let's come down here to tonal range and select highlights here. And you can see it's highlighted that area. So let's just hit delete. Get rid of those white areas. Command D or escape on our keyboard. I'm just going to drag that out a little bit more. Going to duplicate the grass layer, Command J. And that one I'm going to come up to arrange and flip horizontal just to make that grass a little bit thicker and just move that out. That looks a little bit nicer. Let's just merge these two grass layers together. We'll click on the top one, hold our shift key down, come up here to layer and this one's going to be Merge Selected. That just gives us one grass layer, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. So we're going to add our character in now. So we'll come over here to this other tab, and I'm using one of the characters from the Neo Stock, a free character. I'll put the link below as well. You can go over and get these characters absolutely free. And on this picture here, I've just cut out these wings here. So if I turn that one off and bring the wings back, you can see I've just got the wings. So what I'm going to do first, just on the wings here, I'm going to add a mask down here, just a normal mask, and we're going to click on the mask. Let's go and grab a brush, so our new brush icon over here. And as usual, just on our brushes, I'm just on the basic brushes, just picking a soft brush. Back to my layer, we're painting in black. The flow is 25%. And we're just going to make our brush a bit bigger using our right and left bracket keys. And we're going to bring that hair just over the wings here, just brushing that back in. Okay, we'll switch over to white with X on our keyboard, make our brush a little bit smaller, and we'll just fix those areas where we took too much away. Just on that side and maybe in there as well. And down here. Okay, so we've got the hair going over the top of the wings. On the wings here, click back on the wings. I'm going to come down here to adjustments. And I'm going to add a recolor. I'm going to put that color just on the wings for now. So it just affects the wings. And on that recolor layer, I'm going to hit Command I to invert it. Still on my brush, I've still got a soft brush. Still flow of 25%. Let's make our brush a little bit bigger. And for this one, we want to be painting in white. So make sure we've got white selected. Just on 25% and just on the edge of the wings. I'm just doing this to add just a little bit of color to those wings. Just down the side of each one, maybe in the middle here, a little bit of red as well. Going to drop my opacity down all the way down to about 2% make my brush a little bit bigger, and then just blend some of that color going up into the wings as well. Very slight. 
Okay, I'm happy with the way that looks. I'm also going to do a recolor on my model down here. The same thing again, recolor, keeping it red. And I'm just gonna drop that onto my model. And again, I'm going to invert it with my command I. Nice small brush. I'm gonna turn the flow all the way up to 100. I'm gonna paint in this sword here and this saber down here or sword down on this side as well. And all the way flow, all the way back down to about 15. Bigger brush and I'm just gonna add some red to my model's hair here as well. So that is all I'm gonna do on the character at the moment. What I'm gonna do is click on the top layer, hold my shift key down and highlight all my layers here. Come up to layer and this one merge visible. I just want one layer with all my changes. I'm gonna copy that, come over to my picture. We're gonna add our model or our character into the middle here above the stone wall with a command V. Double click and we'll add our character in. Command zero to get that back. I want my character standing right on the wall here and that looks about good about there. What I'm going to do is copy my character with a command J. On the bottom picture of my character, I'm gonna come down here to the layer effects. I'm going to add a color overlay. Click on color overlay, and then I'm just going to drag that down. I'm going to move that all the way up the top above everything. So I've got my character. Make my canvas a little bit smaller, stretch that out a little bit bigger, right underneath the feet here of my character. On this layer, I'm gonna come down here to my live filters. I'm going to come to displace. And on this little pop-out box, I'm going to click on load map from layers beneath. You can see sort of that little distortion there. And then on my layer, I'm going to drop the opacity quite a bit. I'm also going to add a Gaussian blur, just ever so slightly. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do the same for the crow, Command J. The bottom one, we're going to add the layer effects. Color overlay, bottom one, we'll just stretch out a little bit. And we'll do the same, live layers, down to displace. Again, load map from layers beneath. Again, clicking on that layer, we'll add a Gaussian blur. And as usual, we can come and tweak this a little bit later. Make sure we clicked on that layer and drop the opacity. And we might just move that shadow up a little bit like that. And we can tweak that a little bit later. Let's go Command-0 back to normal size. So we're gonna start adding all of our highlights and darkening everything down now. So let's start on all our other layers now. So let's come back to the grass. We'll go one by one down to adjustments and we're going to add an exposure. I'm going to drag that exposure on top so it just affects the grass and darken that down quite a bit. And again, we'll adjust each of these. Now I'm going to use that exposure. I'm going to copy it and put it on all these other layers as well with my command J, add one to my tree, command J, add one to my branches. I'm going to do that for each layer. The one for my crow, I'm going to add. And on that exposure, I'm going to turn that up quite bright. And that one I'm going to invert. And we'll come back to that later. Just remember that that one is inverted. Okay, one more, Command J. We'll put that on our rocks here, darken those rocks down a little bit. Now we just need to tweak all of our layers here. So the grass is okay for now. Let's just have a look at these trees. Maybe we can just darken those down a little bit. The branches. And we'll just go and darken all of those down. Come back to our crow in a minute. Go to our stone wall. We'll darken that down quite a bit. While we're on our stone wall, we'll keep on that exposure. We'll grab our brush. We'll make our brush sort of softer. 
Come back to our layers, painting in black there. Let's put a little bit of a highlight on our wall here. So let's just click here, hold our shift key down, come all the way to the end of the wall. Let's put that little highlight on our wall so that looks a little bit better. So that's looking nice on our wall there. Okay, also on our wall, we're still on our wall and it's changed to white and we'll just make sure that it's darker just under the shoes here and near our little crow here as well. Also on our crow, while we've got our crow, I'm going to put a recolor on our crow as well. Exactly the same as I did with the model. Put that on our crow and on that recolor, I'm just going to invert it. Still on my brush, it flows about 25%, painting in white. Might drop that flow a little bit more, maybe to 15. I'm just gonna put some red just on my little crow here. I want to make my brush really small because I want his eye to be really red. So let's just zoom in, make that brush a little bit smaller, turn up the flow. Let's get a really nice red beak and red eyes. Command zero. Now on our crow, let's go to our exposure layer now. Make sure our brush is a little bit bigger and let's add a little bit of highlight, but that's too high. Bring the flow down again to about 15. Let's put some highlights on our crow there. He's looking pretty good there. Okay, let's do the same for our model now. Let's come on to our exposure layer here. Bring our flow up to about 25%. We're painting in black and let's add some highlights to our model here. Now for my model here, I'm going to click on my model. I'm going to add a new pixel layer. I'm going to drag that down till the whole area is just that one blue color. Let it go. So that pixel layer is affecting only the model. Grabbing my fill tool here, make sure I'm on black. I'm going to fill my model just with black. On that pixel layer, I'm going to change the blend mode to add. I'm going to grab my color picker. Pick this really bright color on my moon here and make sure I'm painting with that color. My brush, still nice and soft, flow down to about 20%. Make sure that that color is activated. And now I'm gonna paint some of that color just down the wings here and onto my model. There we go. We can always just drop the opacity on that a little bit if we think it's too much. And also, you can also use your erase brush tool if you think you need to get rid of it some, but I'm quite happy with that at the moment. So let's now add some of our light to our trees and branches. Let's come back up here to our tree. Back on our exposure for our tree, we are looking at this left hand side tree first. We'll get our colors back to default by hitting D on our keyboard. Back on our brush, up to 25% now. And we're painting in black and we're just gonna add some of those highlights to our tree down here. Change over to black if you think you've got too much there. So let's do the same on our branch here onto the exposure, painting in black, still on our brush. And let's add some of that light again to our branches here. Okay, let's go to our next tree, add our light here. A little bit down here as well. And then onto our branch. You can see I'm doing this fairly quickly, guys, so you can just take your time. So onto our branch, we'll brighten that up again. So there we go, looking pretty good. Now that uh, black layer that I added to our model and filled it with black, you can do that to the trees and the branches as well if you want to. But just below this or on top of this city layer, I'm going to add an adjustment, I'm going to add a curves just to affect the sky and everything under that sky to about there. That looks pretty good. On my moon layer here, what I'm going to do is come up here to my blur tool, uh, make the flow about 
Just going to blur that moon a little bit, especially around the edges there. I'm going to do the same to the city layer here. Just could put a depth of field or a Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur, but I just want to control it a little bit more. So I'm just going to use my blur tool here, just the edges there and a little bit on my stars as well just to control that a little bit better. So it just makes our model stand out a little bit more. Maybe on top we'll add another adjustment with the curves right on top and just bring maybe that down a little bit. Looks pretty good. Maybe we've gone a little bit too far on that one. Maybe add that S curve in there. Okay, what I want to do now is just make these swords sort of glow a little bit. So again, above my model, I'm just going to add that pixel layer. Again, I'm going to fill it with black, grabbing my fill tool, make sure I'm on black. Just click once, come up here to my blend modes and click add. Now this time I'm going to pick a really nice red color. And on my brush, my flow, I think all the way down to about 10%. Make my brush a little bit bigger. Make sure we're on that red. And let's just add a bit of glow. Just a tiny little bit of glow on there. That looks pretty good. Now, what we'll do as well, I've still got these two pictures that I haven't brought in yet. So I've got this picture here, just of this sort of like a little blood flow. I'm going to change the blend mode on that to multiply. Come up here to my move tool and just move it underneath the sword here, about there. The other picture that I haven't used is this sort of water drip picture here. I'll make it a bit bigger so you can see it, just a drip of water. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen and on that water drip I'm going to add a recolor and you guessed it, it's going to be red. So we'll just clip that just to that water drip and we'll make that a bit darker just with this lightness here. Now this is very subtle, this little detail, but I'm just going to put that all the way down here, turn it round and just put it on the end of the sword here as it's sort of the blood stripping off the sword. Very small little detail, but not too bad. So we've used all of our pictures in our composite here. So to finish off guys, as usual, we could use our develop persona or we could come up to our tone mapping, which I'm going to do now. So let's click on our top layer here, come up to layer and merge visible. And let's come over here to our tone mapping. We'll pick the detailed one as usual and bring our tone compression all the way down to 10 this time, I think, and some contrast down to 10 as well. Let's bring the exposure sort of quite down. That looks pretty good there. Let's come down to our detailed refinement and just have each one about 50%. I'm going to click on the white balance as well. And I'm just going to give this a bit of a blue tint about, I reckon about minus 30 looks pretty good. And then I'm going to hit apply. So there we go, everybody. That is my picture this week, the picture of the Dark Angel. If you have enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget that all of the pictures that I've used will be linked in the description below. You can also head over to the Buy Me A Coffee site. I'll have some of these cutouts already there for you to download absolutely free. While you're there, if you'd like to support my channel, you can do that as well. You can also click on the super thanks button below if you do want to support my channel. But until next time, I'll say to you, stay well stay safe and I'll see you in my next video.